Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Well, in the news this week, we have the latest on the Yemenese crisis, now affecting over one million children. Very sad situation there. Also, more sanctions against Russia and the backlash from President Vladimir Putin. And lastly, a report gaining attention about who the U.S. plans to save during a nuclear war. Well, these stories and more, but first a report on the leading cause of death among Americans under 50. Drug overdoses, mm. more specifically opioids. Well, as a candidate, now President Donald Trump pledged to end the opioid epidemic. So how's he doing? Well, in a phone call with Mexico's president, Mr. Trump called New Hampshire a drug infested den. Now considered to be the epicenter of the opioid crisis, President Trump had promised the people of New Hampshire that he would stop drugs from pouring into their community. Well, in a recent interview with CBS News, Richard Baum, acting director of the Office of Natural Drug Control Policy, said he would give the Trump administration an A-plus on how they're dealing with the opioid crisis. He explained that having customs and border protection along with working on legislation to have better and tighter controls is all progress and movement in the right direction. Well, the president's budget asked for $10.7 billion for drug treatment, which would be a $200 million increase. However, it would cut $167 million for abuse preventions. The Trump administration has tried to take credit for putting up $500 million uh, for the 21st Century Cures Act, even though that money came from the previous administration of President Obama. Interesting. Well, Gary Mendel, who lost his son to the opioid epidemic, uh, said the Trump administration hasn't done anything despite being very vocal during his campaign to attack the issue. President Trump was in West Virginia and Ohio, but mentioned very little about the opioid crisis, saying there was, quote, a big problem there. Well, turning our focus now to Yemen, where more than a million children are suffering from acute hunger. The country is on the brink of famine because of a war that has been ongoing for more than two years. Now, aid has been severely cut off, and what little has managed to reach the people has done very little. Well, Caroline Anning, a policy advisor with Save the Children, said Yemen's children are trapped in an almost unimaginable tragedy. They're under attack from all sides. Uh, children hugely malnourished all across the country. Millions of children, she said, too weak to stand up, too weak to go to school and dying of hunger. More than half of Yemen's 28 million population are going hungry as a result of a Saudi-led coalition that has been bombing Houthi rebels since they forced out the internationally recognized president in 2015. Now, all of this has resulted in fuel, power, and water being cut off from the Yemenis. Well, disease has also been spreading from sewage-contaminated water sources. This has led to a nasty cholera outbreak, which is quickly spreading because most sanitation services have been destroyed. Uh, with aid deliveries being blocked, the, the situation excuse me, in Yemen is very bleak. Hundreds of thousands are already suffering from malnutrition. Uh, they have now been further weakened by severe diarrhea. Uh, the people there are desperately seeking treatment from a health system that has basically collapsed. Well, in other overseas news, Hassan Rouhani is due to be sworn in his second, for his second term as president of Iran. The promise of reform and economic growth won the 68-year-old an election victory in May. Although his presidency is secure, the nuclear deal he brokered with the U.S. and other world powers in his first term appears under threat. Uh, why so? 
Well, U.S. President Donald Trump has been criticizing Iran since relaxing of sanctions. Hmm. Rouhani hopes to keep Iran open to the world, saying, we all know creating jobs and creating wealth requires large-scale investment and access to advanced markets and technology. Well, foreign investment has restarted in Iran since the lifting of sanctions two years ago in exchange for the limiting of Iran's nuclear program. Well, the country's economy has been crippled, uh, was crippled prior to that nuclear deal, but some are worrying that could be the direction that they're headed. Well, the U.S. has once again imposed sanctions on Iran as a result of Iran's ballistic missile tests. Iranian leaders say the sanctions break the terms of the nuclear deal and argue EU countries investing in Iran will continue to do business. The Islamic Republic Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khomeini spoke about this very thing as he addressed a group of elites saying, we should stand strongly against the United States and on the back of popular support, you will be able to stop their schemes and prevent their conspiracies. Also, as a side note, Jeff, the U.S., uh, the latest U.S. Uh, restrictions on Iran also include sanctions on, of course, North Korea and Russia. Well, Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev said the U.S. is starting a full-scale trade war. Hmm. Now, government ministers uh, in Tehran are calling the latest sanctions illegitimate and are vowing retaliation. Katan, all these latest developments are going to pose a, uh, a big challenge for Hussein Rouhani's promise to, uh, to keep Iran open to the, uh, the trading mm -hmm. and that economic growth with other countries that he's promised, and that actually won him another term. Right, right. Well, a travel warning has been issued by the State Department warning U.S. citizens against traveling to Venezuela. This warning was prompted due to social unrest, violent crime, and pervasive food and medicine shortages in the region. U.S. government employees at the embassy in Caracas were also given the option to leave the country. Well, Venezuela has experienced clashes and violent protests for the past four, four months, uh, which has resulted in the death of 108 people. Now, opposition leaders have called for street demonstrations against the government despite a ban on protests imposed by President Maduro. Uh, a spokesperson for the Human Rights Office, Liz Throsel, uh, called for all sides to maintain peace amid heightened tensions, saying, we're deeply concerned at the risk of further violence in Venezuela, where elections for the Constituent Assembly convened by President Nicolas Maduro are being held on Sunday. Uh, the wishes of the Venezuelan people to uh, participate or not in this election need to be respected. No one should be obligated to vote, while those willing to take part should be able to do so freely. Venezuela has also been threatened with sanctions. Venezuela President Nicolas Maduro had a few words for President Trump saying, as president, I address him. President Donald Trump stopped the aggression against Venezuela. Venezuela is a fundamental basis for uh, the stability of the entire Caribbean region and Latin America. If Venezuela is divided, um, the Bo Bo uh, Bovarian Revolution, which is a revolution that they had in the past, he continued, it is forced to take up arms. We will again fight under the same flag and it will cross our borders. Now, U.S. Uh, strategists should think hard. Venezuela wants to live in peace, wants to live peacefully. Stop your aggression. Well, Mark uh, Weisbrot from the Center for Economic and Policy Research gave his analyst, analysis excuse me, on the situation, commenting, well, the Trump administration has threatened Venezuela with a very, a really severe economic sanctions that would pretty much destroy the economy. They export half of their oil to the United States, and these sanctions could prevent Venezuela from exporting anywhere uh, from their oil companies from doing business. So basically, almost bring their economy to uh, to complete halt. That's right. Mr. Weisbrot uh, went on to say, so it would really, really destroy the economy and vastly increase the shortages of food and medicine and everything else. Well, that's why the uh, there's a recent poll this week showing 63% of the people were against it. Mm -hmm. Even the majority of people who support the opposition were against these sanctions from the Trump administration. So the threat is really coming from Washington, not from Venezuela. Hmm, interesting. 
Uh, with all the threats and aggression being displayed towards all nations, it's enough to cause any sensible person concern. Uh, Larry McGee has a story for us on which nation is the most feared. Larry, what do you have for us? The United States of America, at least according to recent stats taken by posters at Pew Research. The information was taken from 42,000 people across 38 countries, and it was not Iran, North Korea, Syria, or Russia, but the U.S. that most people feared. In speaking with respect to causes, American citizens say the findings may be a result of the U.S.'s tone and political change. They say the statistics aren't surprising, but it is concerning its scary, and it is the sort of image America has right now. They believe that today there is a lot more anger towards us and within us. Other responses were more disturbing, such as one pedestrian who felt comforted by the findings, citing the infamous cliche that it is better to be feared than love. The twist, however, that is that as opposed to the U.S.'s enemies, it is actually America's supposed allies who are increasingly expressing alarm concerning the petrol power. Canada, for instance, reportedly sees the U.S. as more of a threat than either Russia or China, and the sentiment of NATO, Turkey, South Korea, Japan, Spain, Greece, and Germany is reportedly just the same. Many of those same allies are expressing strong disagreement with the U.S.'s recent round of proposed sanctions against Russia, and the move is reported to be generating serious diplomatic discord. The penalties are said to be in response to alleged election tampering on behalf of Moscow, but the major issue is that the ripple effect of the sanctions will produce an impact on more than just Russia and will also cause economic strain throughout Europe. The man everyone has been waiting to hear from, Russia's President Vladimir Putin, has stepped forward now to offer his perspective and commentary on the recent developments. The Russian head says that America has taken a step to jeopardize Russian-U.S. relations. And the important thing, he says, is that that step was not triggered by anything. This is a move to impose illegal restrictions, he said, to attempt to influence other countries, including U.S. allies, who are interested in developing ties with Russia. In response to America's moves, Moscow has expressed an intention to expel 750 American diplomatic, technical, and other support staff from the country by September 1st, and that will reduce the amount of U.S. staff in the country to 455 personnel, which is a mere reflection of the amount of Russian staff being allowed to remain and function in the U.S. President Putin stated to the press recently that Russia has been waiting for quite a long time so that maybe something would change for the better. He says that they had hoped that the situation would change, but it looks like even if it does change, then it won't be in the near future. The Russian head stated that he decided that it is time for Russia to show that it would not leave anything unanswered. Analysts believe that President Putin might have been holding out to see if progress might have been made through President Trump but with the incumbent leader's hands reportedly having been tied by Congress on the matter, he has himself remained silent and delegated comments to the vice president. VP Pence stated recently that as America makes his intentions clear, they expect Russian behavior to change. The change that America itself is imposing is on how the nations can buy and sell. The restrictions on commerce are not just with Russia, but also with Iran and North Korea, and they are reported to span several categories, including mining, finance, metals, shipping, and energy. The U.S. is said to have leveled the warning that it will punish any company involved in developing and maintaining Russian-related pipelines and that it immediately places the U.S. at odds with a number of very prominent European companies. The EU is threatening retaliation if the move encroaches on European business interests. Germany has been the most vocal opponent, stating that America is using sanctions to promote its own business interests. The German foreign minister stated that Berlin will protect itself against an America first industrial policy masquerading as sanctions. Analysts were asked to weigh in on whether or not the idea of Washington promoting its own interests through the latest sanctions is a fair claim, to which 
once German political commentator Maximilian Kroc contributed that it is a fair claim in so much as the sanctions are of, a, are of, of course, American internal politics, but it is unfair that it is being linked with President Donald Trump because obviously the Senate and the House have imposed the sanctions to harm the president. So the sanctions, he says, are not an America first policy of Donald Trump. It is instead an anti-Russian policy of lawmakers on Capitol Hill against the president. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee, Katan Jeff, back to you. President Vladimir Putin definitely wanting to show the United States what he thinks of those sanctions. Wow. Well, almost like the boots on the ground dilemma in the Obama administration, there appears to be some confusion as to the Obamacare program and whether President Trump said he would repeal and replace the program. Now the media says he did say it while he says that he didn't. Well, let's take a look at this next clip and you can judge for yourself. On my first day, I'm going to ask Congress to immediately send me a bill to repeal and replace Obamacare. You're going to have such great health care at a tiny fraction of the cost, and it's going to be so easy. We will be able to immediately repeal and replace Obamacare. Have to do it. It'll be repeal and replace. It will be essentially simultaneously. It's an unbelievably complex subject. Nobody knew that health care could be so complicated. With no Democrat support, we couldn't quite get there. We're just a very small number of votes short. I never said repeal and re replace Obamacare. You've all heard my speeches. I never said repeal it and replace it within 64 days. This is a repeal and a replace of Obamacare, make no mistake about it. We've had a lot of victories, but we haven't had a victory on health care. We'll just let Obamacare fail. Uh, we're not going to own it. I'm not going to own it. I can tell you the Republicans are not going to own it. Well, it definitely seems like there's a conflict of words. Right. Well, Washington has a new challenge on its hands as North Korea's latest missile launch with the potential of reaching the United States mainland, hitting targets like Los Angeles, Chicago, or even New York has just recently taken place. Well, U.S. bombers along with South Korean and Japanese fighter jets flew over the Korean Peninsula as a direct response to the missile launch. Well, this along with the U.S. THAAD, a uh, missile defense system, which we reported on not that long ago, uh, was, a, was tested in Alaska recently, basically to flex its muscles to show North Korea, hey, if you're wanting to fight, then to fight, then yeah. we'll bring it to you. Well, North Korea responded on its state-run news station saying that if the U.S. continues to resort to military adventure and tough sanctions, the DPRK will respond with its resolute act of justice. From the U.S. President Trump, uh, from the U.S. President Trump tweeted, I'm very disappointed in China. Our foolish past leaders have allowed them to make hundreds of billions of dollars a year on trade, yet they do nothing for us in North Korea. Just talk. Well, we will no longer allow this to continue. China could easily solve this problem. Uh, U.S. Vice President Pence reiterated uh, Trump's thoughts on his European trip uh, while in Estonia. Pence said, we believe China should do more. Uh, North Korea's sole ally, China, has condemned the launchings, saying they violate the United Nations Security Council resolutions, but said that they, referring to China, don't hold the key to resolving the issues in the Korean Peninsula. Well, for the first time in human history, scientists have successfully removed a deadly hereditary gene from a human embryo. The team of scientists from the U.S. and uh, South Korea removed a gene that could cause heart problems. One of the researchers on the project said that the ability to single out and remove a deadly gene was not surprisingly complicated. Well, some are concerned that it could lead to uh, a, the creating of designer babies where parents design children that are smarter, stronger, and taller than ever before. Of course, if they can get in there and start manipulating the DNA, that's what everyone's fear is.
Well, Eric Topol of the Scripps Research Institute said, we don't know what happens when the embryo grows into a baby or when that baby grows into an adult. These are some big unknowns that'll take years to understand, and we're really not ready for this to get launched. The questions are a really, uh, the unknowns, he said, are really big questions, and a lot of questions are unanswered as a result. So the fear is, what are we doing to change the DNA, and how is it going to affect you know, the life of that child later. Right, and likely, and uh, as he said, you're not going to know right away. It's going to be years down the road. Right, with certain de genes only turning on at a certain point in a person's life. Well, you just have to wait and see. Yeah. Well, a new book entitled Raven Rock, the story of the U.S. government's plan to save itself while the rest of the U.S. die, was the topic of an interview between Garrett Graff and CBS News. Raven Rock is one of the government's three big bunkers. Now, this one in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, built in the 1940s and 50s. It's literally a hollowed out mountain inside Raven Rock Mountain. It has hundreds of thousands of square feet of office space, dorms, uh, fire departments, reservoirs, absolutely everything needed to live underground for a month at a time. So as you can see, very complete everything they need. Interesting. Well, the plans uh, with these facilities during the 1940s and 1950s during the Eisenhower Truman years was, well, you'd be able to evacuate the cities, the governments, you know, evacuate all the people out to these bunkers, what they also call relocation facilities all around Washington. But as the U.S. military got stronger and obtained nuclear weaponry, it became the evacuation of a small number of government officials into these bunkers and, well, pretty much the rest of us left on our own. Well, even though some plans of evacuation have changed over the years, others haven't. For example, there's a set of planes, the E-4B Night Watch planes, the President's Doomsday planes that are kept running 24 hours a day, following the President wherever he goes. Now, he could run nuclear war from one of these planes for three days. Now, these, um, the, these plans are so secret that not even the members of the government who are on the list know if they or the person next to them will go. Interesting. Well, the government built over 100 of these bunkers, a.k.a. relocation facilities, underground and in mountains. Uh, and in moving government officials to these facilities, Families are not allowed. Ooh. Yeah, so yeah, you got these men under pressure, men and women under pressure in these facilities, expected to continue to do their job, yet they're worried about their loved ones, their family members still, you know, taking the brunt of whatever may be taking place outside of those bunkers. Well, typically the list includes high-ranking government officials, cabinet members, congressional leaders, members of the Supreme Court, and administrative staff. Uh, some people are actually on the list by accident. Hmm. Well, these facilities are scattered throughout the U.S. from Pennsylvania, Colorado to Virginia at a luxury resort in West Virginia at a hotel called Greenbrier. One such facility existed for that purpose of housing officials in the event of a nuclear emergency. But that place is now a museum. Behind a 25-ton blast door is enough room for 400 government uh, officials to live for 60 days and uh, that facility, Catan, had only been used one time, and that was during 9-11. Wow, mm, interesting. Well, at the end of all of mankind's harmful activities, including the nuclear wars that government officials know is coming, protection won't be found in the mountains, in underground bunkers, or behind 25-ton blast doors. The only mountain of protection is at the uplifted, promoted work of Yahweh in these last days called the House of Yahweh. Seek the House of Yahweh today by contacting them to learn what you can do to survive the coming destruction and how to obtain true, lasting peace. To contact the House of Yahweh today, you can do so. And when you do, don't forget your free copies of the monthly newsletter and prophetic word magazine. Here's how. You can write them at the House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas, 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites, www.yahweh.com, www.yeshrohawkins.com, or www.yahwehsbranch.com. 
You can also visit our website by going to www.ypnnews.com. Remember, any emails can be emailed to info at yahweh.com. Any international calls, you can call the number that's on your screen now. And lastly, we'd like to remind you of two great study tools on the market today, absolutely free, both of them, the Yisrael Hawkins, or the Yisrael Says program, rather, and the Ask Yisrael program. You can find out more by going to www.yisraelsays.com and www.askyisrael.com. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next, Yisrael Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thank you for watching.